Good morning, everyone. I'm Steve Sachs. I'm your uh, vice president for the council board, and we're sharing with the staff giving announcements. So I'm going to give you some announcements of things going on. Uh, first, for any new members or people visiting, I uh, would like to, one, welcome you. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask any of the staff or board members, maybe board members, raise your hands. Tony's in the back, so we'll answer questions, and of course the staff. And there's some information on contacting if you have questions later on the second page in the bulletin. Also on, on next Sunday, uh, the 12th, we'll be accepting new members, so uh, uh, hope you can join us for that. Also on uh, just educational activities, page two, you'll see we've got quite a few things going on, Bible studies, book, book tribe for the men uh, as well, uh, reading a book, Last Great Hope, I believe right now. And then there's several activities today, don't uh, run out if you've got time. We've got cross-generational Sunday school today at 1030, right after this. Also, there's going to be a cake fellowship for all the December birthdays, so come wish everybody a happy birthday. And then after the Sunday, uh, Sunday school, there will be time for uh, decorating the tree. I believe that came out of Jess's uh, backyard. So thank you, Jess. Uh, and then uh, the Altar Guild is also meeting right after Whoops, the service or after Sunday school? Service. service, okay, thank you. Be a short meeting. And then the, the other is the holiday baskets. Heidi's reported there's, there's been a really nice response, but we do still have nine kids and six parents left. If anyone wants to uh, uh, grab a gift uh, list out there, she's got them set up on the table outside. And uh, if you don't have time to shop, she's even offered to, if you want to make a contribution, to help do the shopping. And the last thing I wanted to mention, uh, Christmas program is next Sunday during the service. It was the night before Jesus. And actually, I lied. There's one more thing I wanted to mention. Uh, there's, uh, thanks for everybody turning in the time and talent sheets. Uh, if you also are interested in participating in some of the uh, organizational activities of the church, such as the committees, I'll be out and available to answer questions in a list of vacant committee positions on the uh, bulletin board. So please check that out or ask me if you've got some questions on that. And I think at that, I want to uh, turn it over to Kim real quick. Good morning. Nice to see everybody here today. I wanted to let you know uh, in two weeks, right after church on the 19th, we are going to have a fellowship gathering slash blessing slash shower for Shannon, who is getting married on New Year's Day. So if you are interested in coming, we'd love to really surround her in love and send her with a good blessing as she embarks on this journey. We're going to have brunch. So we are asking for volunteers to bring fruit fruit um, or like muffins, pastries, donuts. So that, again, it'll just be right after church. And if you would like to uh, give a gift to her, we will have information, an all-church email that will be coming out this week to, that details that more. Um, that's entirely up to you, but we would just love to at least have um, you come and join us and help her to feel the love of the congregation as she uh, goes on her way. So again, December 19th, 1045, just right after church. Thank you. Thank you, Kim and Steve. Um, where's Elijah hiding? So we will uh, begin again this morning, the second Sunday of Advent, uh, with lighting two candles now. So Elijah, if you'll join me. And we begin with prayer, and then we'll sing this week two verses of all earth is hopeful, so let us pray. 
God of light, we come before you seeking your hope and power. Our hearts desire your presence. We are waiting for the dawn from on high to break upon us. We light candles, trusting that the smallest flame can drive out our greatest fears. We anticipate your coming among us with peace and thankfulness. As we await your coming, light a flame within us. May we shine with the brightness of your hope. God of light, as we light this second candle, open our voices to declare your goodness. You come from on high into the depths of our lives, into both the joy and the despair, and you declare your grace for each of us. Guide us in the path of peace, light a flame within us. May we shine with the brightness of your light. God of light, keep our voices tuned to words of praise. May we always follow your path of peace. Guide us in these Advent days until our Savior is born among us. Turn our attention to you, the one who is our song, our hope, and our joy. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, the light that has no end. Amen. And now we sing together, All Earth is Hopeful. continue our worship with our confession and hearing again God's forgiveness is for us. To be the Holy Trinity, one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trust in the tender mercy of God. God presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is enough for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in things that do not last. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus sees you and loves you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are the children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mercy on us all. Our prayer of the day. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who reign, lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is uh, from the book of Luke, uh, chapter 1, verses 68 to 79. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. The oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet to the path of peace. To our, uh, to our first reading, God announces a covenant with Israel. A messenger like Malachi, his name means my messenger, will prepare the way for the coming of the Lord by purifying and refining God's people as silver and gold are refined. So the reading for today will be Malachi verse 3, chapter 1 through 4. I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But you can endure the day of his coming. Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring in offerings of righteousness. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord as in days gone by, as in former years. Word of God, word of life.
Our gospel today is from Luke chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Licinius, tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of, the, of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight and the rough ways smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. The Gospel of our Lord. Be Please be seated. Hello. So glad I didn't have to read all those names. Holy smokes. All right. Hey, kids, come on up. Awesome. All right. Have a seat. Okay. Is there somebody here who's a really good counter? Like can count to, say, 25? You're a really good counter? Okay, then you can sit right here for a sec. Okay, um, how about somebody that's really good at math? All right, what's your name? Say it again. Kara? Kara? Okay, Kara, I want you to do this in your head. But don't tell us the answer yet, all right? So I want you to take 25 and subtract 5. Got a number? Okay. I didn't say it was going to be a hard math problem. I just need, you know. All right, you got a number in your head. All right, and what's your name? Joseph. Joseph. All right, Joseph, we're going to do some counting. Um, oh, good, maybe she's not in here. I took the calendar off the refrigerator. And um, it's very near and dear to my wife. So don't tell her yet. I'll, I'll try to make sure I get it back. Um, if I lose it between here and the house, um, well, that could happen. But uh, it has all the important things that we need to do, dentist appointments and that kind of thing. Do you guys have a calendar at your house? A lot of you guys have a calendar? Or, or when you're at school, you see the calendar and it says certain things. All right, Joseph, we got to do something here. Okay, today is the 5th, right? we got to count to the 25th. What is on the 25th? Anybody know? Anybody know what's on the 25th? Oh, you already knew the answer. Well, gee, let's see if we can count. So I want you to count all the way up to there. You ready? Go. Five. No, one. One. Start. Wait, start from so one. Start one. Just, we're, we're counting just the boxes. By fives? Just by ones. So one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Did you get twenty two, Karen? All right, so twenty days from now, we have Christmas morning. 19 days from now, we have Christmas Eve. Yes, ma'am. Is Christmas morning the day where you're supposed to unbox a de gift? or? Well, that's a good question. Okay, because different families do it a different way. Like, when I was growing up, my dad was a pastor like Pastor Schumacher. And so we would open our presents on Christmas Eve because my dad was always had church service on Christmas morning, and we as kids weren't patient enough to wait to, to open presents until dad got home from work. So, so we, had, we opened them on Christmas. Well, we opened most of them on Christmas Eve, and then we'd have some on Christmas morning. So many of you probably have different traditions. How many of you open on Christmas Eve? Or maybe a present or two? And then maybe some of you open on Christmas morning? Yeah, yeah. So... All right, so Joseph, we said 20 days. Okay, and Kara confirmed that with the math. Now, 
in our reading today. And of course, I left my glasses at home. So we're going to do the best we can. It said, uh, John the Baptist said, prepare the way for the Lord. Fill in the valleys, level off the mountains, make the crooked road straight, and the rough places smooth. Now, we have 20 days, we decided, right? 20? So does that mean we need to um, get some construction crews out there to prepare the way for the Lord? No, you're shaking your head. Why don't you come on over here? Come here. What, what do you think it means? It's like a metaphor, so you have to like change it into something else. We have some smart kids in this church. Holy cow. A metaphor. Exactly. Yeah. So they're just trying to say, hey, we need to make sure our hearts are right. Make sure we're doing the best we can each day, right? And look after one another. That's what I take from it. And I'm a school teacher, so I always look after kids and always want them to look after one another. So um, holy smokes, we got the smartest kids on all of uh, Puyallup. So nice job, you guys. Let's say a prayer. Where did I put that piece? All right, let's say a prayer, and then I got treats for you. Dear Father, we want to be ready for you. Make our crooked ways straight and our rough places smooth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. You guys grab a snack or two or 12. I don't care. And uh, have a great day. Thank you. Quite a husband and wife team there. <laughs> Tough act to follow. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So in Zechariah's prophecy, which was our psalm today, you may have seen psalm in the bulletin and then it said Luke 1 and you're saying, wait a minute, that's not a psalm. But actually there are psalms in other parts of the Bible. So we got one of those today. Zechariah, talking about his newborn son, said that God will be the one to give people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of, of our God. This tender mercy of God is like the rising sun that will come to us from heaven and shine on those living in darkness and, the, and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace. And so I actually have a sermon title today. i kind of gotten away from that, but it's uh, Thy Kingdom Come, like we pray in the Lord's Prayer. And actually it's part one, and so I thought we would do a two-part sermon. How about that? Um, and that's because we're in chapter three of Luke, both this week and next, and both are John preaching in the wilderness, and both are during this, obviously, this time of Advent and leading up to Christmas and the coming of Jesus Christ as the savior of the world. And so the message is, thy kingdom of light come into the darkness on our earth, just as it is heaven. And Luke says of John that he is the one, the prophet Isaiah said, would come as a in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low, the crooked road shall become straight, the rough ways smooth. And when all this happens, then all people will see God's salvation. So Tuesday mornings when we 
gather to look at the text for the coming Sunday, Dave always brings our favorite one-volume commentary by a, a gentleman named Dumelo from the early 20th century. And so he always offers to enlighten us with what Dumelo has to say. And, and then on Wednesday mornings, when some of us gather to do this, Steve Lessard always asks, what did Dumelo say? And so this week I'm going to tell you what Dumelo said. He said about this passage that the valleys represent unbelief and all sins of omission. And when we haven't, that means when we haven't acted as we should, even when we know how we're supposed to treat others and we don't. So that void, that valley will be filled in. And, and that will be filled in by God's grace. And then those mountains and hills, those will be humbled and cast down. And he said those stand for pride and haughtiness and self-will. I wonder in all our talk about free will, do we sometimes actually mean our self-will when we don't even know it? The crooked roads, he says, will signify all sorts of deceit and guile and hypocrisy and untruthfulness. And the rough ways, he invites us to picture anger and strife and envy and hatred and malice. Now, whether or not he's correct in that, that these are symbols for something else, as John said, a metaphor, um, is not really the point. They just illustrate the darkness in our lives and in our world and also what the light will do. As these valleys are filled in and as the mountains and hills are made low, as the crooked roads made straight and the rough ways smooth, then Luke says all salvation will see, or all, all people will see God's salvation. So, does that, does that mean that our unbelief and our neglect of others' needs and our anger and our strife, do all these things obscure God's salvation? Do they obscure God's salvation from others and also ourselves? Last uh, Thanksgiving Eve, we have a worship service on Wednesday evening, and I was driving home, turned in onto our street, and as I came around a corner, suddenly in my headlights was this crazed, bearded man waving his arms and screaming at me. And I made the mistake of stopping and rolling down my window to see what he was yelling about, which just gave him the opportunity to swear and yell at me. He thought I was driving too fast, which I tried to plead my innocent, but innocence but he would have none of it just kept screaming at me so obviously he'd lost it and uh, I he does have a point and he was upset that a lot of people drive you know as everywhere else drive up and down our street too fast and he was worried about our kids but I think we neither of us saw God's salvation really at that point did we <laughs> and unfortunately sometimes hopefully and frequently the two is on the other foot um I went into the bank last week a couple of times and was trying to do a transaction and was met with resistance. And the second time, the person helping me just kept saying the same thing over and over and over again. And I, too, something switched in my head and I kind of lost it. So I slammed my hand down on the desk and picked up my paperwork, stormed out of the lobby, threw my pen down, and... Then I had to figure out, how can I go back there? <laughs> but same thing, uh, neither, nobody in that lobby of the bank could really see God's salvation at that point. So I did go back a third time and finally was able to do my business. I did repent and ask for forgiveness. And perhaps there, perhaps there God's salvation was seen among us in the repentance and in the forgiveness. John the Baptist came telling people all about God's salvation through the forgiveness of our sins because of the tender mercy of our God. Jesus Christ is the sun rising, coming to us from heaven to shine on us who are living in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the path of peace. So I'm going to try another metaphor. John, are you ready for this? Um, picture God as the sun itself. 
And then Jesus, God's son, is like the rays of the sun rising from heaven. So picture the the wonderful and the beautiful sunrises that we see this time of year and and many of us are awake because the sun doesn't come up, doesn't make its presence known for much later into the morning. But when the sun does finally shine and we see the, the rays, then the darkness is chased away, isn't it? And then if I could try to stretch that metaphor a little bit, think of the Holy Spirit as the warmth that we feel when the sun shines on us, the lifting of our spirit and the joy that we feel. I saw an Instagram post this past week, which I think Facebook or or Meta, as we call it now, and Instagram, they must have gotten the message that there's too much negativity. So I don't know if you've noticed that, there's a lot more positive messaging going on. But I saw a post last week that said, have you ever met someone that was sunshine in human form? And I wonder if that's what the Holy Spirit does within us. So many are worried that our country is suffering from a gathering darkness. There is so much injustice and our communities often seem to be living under the shadow of death. There seems to be so much unbelief and neglect of others and pride and self-will and hypocrisy and untruthfulness and the shadow of death of all of these seem to be hanging over us. But John the Baptist and this Advent season, they point to the rising sun coming to shine among us, to scatter the darkness, to bring light to the world and to guide our feet into the path of peace. God has redeemed us and has made us a kingdom to live in his way of peace. Revelation 1 says Jesus Christ loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom. Priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And Colossians 1 says God has has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So think of God's salvation as as our relationships, where this is all lived out, where our freedom and our forgiveness is lived with each other, where we are restored and redeemed and made healthy and whole. So we can neglect and we can ignore our relationships. We can not put in the time and the effort to nurture them and to deepen them. We can turn away from people that we we should love and and care about and then not experience the benefits of those relationships, not experience that mutual care for one another, that knowing and being known. We can also turn and lean into our relationships. And so I think probably each of us know someone that we could reach out to and could reconnect with and, and let them know that we care and love them. I know that I do. Maybe I'll say. John calls us to repent for the ways that we turn away and promises the forgiveness of our sins. So first, turn and repent from the ways that aren't peace and know, secondly, that we are forgiven. And then third, pursue the ways of peace. Pursue what John tells us about next week, so stay tuned for that. This week, think of the Holy Spirit as our leader and as our guide. If we set out on a journey, if we drive to some particular destination, but we don't know the way, and we just start driving, we could fumble around and we could make wrong turns, and we might find it eventually, but isn't it a lot easier to ask directions or to pull out our map and have someone show us the way? That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. Now, one final story in closing. There's a pastor in the Bronx. And he's a uh, Southern Baptist tradition. And when he was growing up, he was at seminary, so early 20s, and he had a mentor. He, as part of his studies, he learned that the Southern Baptist tradition was started by slaveholders. And being black, he was troubled by that. And so he went to his his mentor, who was also black, and he said, how come you're in the Southern Baptist tradition knowing their past history? 
And his mentor responded to him. He said, well, I could leave and I could go somewhere else, but I, I decided to stay and to be part of the solution. And so that's the invitation for us today, that the solution to the darkness in our world and in our lives is the light of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And all flesh will see God's salvation. Luke doesn't say that we might see it. We will see the salvation of God. We will experience it in our own lives. And so this is our prayer, that we would have eyes to see God's salvation. We pray into God's promise that this will be so. And in fact, in Jesus, God has done it. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing together. prayers. Grounded in our faith in Jesus and serving our neighbor in love, we offer our prayers for the church and for the world and for all of creation. Let us pray. God of presence, you send messengers ahead of you, ahead of you to proclaim the day of your coming. In this season of Advent, may the world see and hear and turn to greet you. Bless your church to announce your coming through our words and our lives of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, send your spirit to all living creatures, especially those that are endangered. Provide shelter and care and bring, bring us all into right relationship with the earth you created and that you call good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this season of watching and waiting, we pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. We pray specifically for our sisters and brothers in Nepal. As they wait for healing and support, give them your peace. We pray for your presence, knowledge, and protection for our neighbors amid the challenges they face. Grant them health and understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your spirit, Guide and lead leaders of our nation, our cities, and our schools, and our businesses to work on behalf of those who have lost parents and spouses and loved ones. Immigrants, the, the imprisoned, those living in poverty, and all who are oppressed. 
Make them bold in their commitments to justice and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your servants to care for those who suffer. Use our ministries and our lives to reach out with compassion to those who are hungry, oppressed, lonely, or ill. We pray especially for strength and support and healing for Carrie, who has COVID and who is grieving the death of her husband, Andy. Keep her unborn child safe and healthy and growing. We pray as well for comfort and peace for Tara and Jan and their whole family. We pray for continued healing for Joanne, for effective treatment for Julie and Gary, for healing for Shannon and her dad following surgery for both this past week. And now you were invited as well to offer your petitions either silently or out loud. Give hope to all who are anxious and overcome with worry because of pain and suffering and despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, send prophets.